And the best thing you can do as a business owner is to lean out right now, lean out. If you didn't know by now, we are in a recession and it's likely to get a lot worse. Listen, I talk a lot about e-commerce and D2C, um, but also this is applicable to other industries that I'm a part of, manufacturing, B2B services. It's a lot, It's about to get real bad. And there's been sort of inflated fake numbers that has gotten us up to this point over the past 12 to 18 months, where there's been a lot of fear that we were gonna enter a recession, um, that there was gonna be sort of this bubble that happened and it just never happened. We, 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 the government, everybody sort of figured out a way to make it work. And we used last year's fourth quarter, which was a record breaking fourth quarter. And we used this past prime day, which was according to Amazon, a record breaking prime day as a way to say like, things are all good, but it's not. And, uh, we're going to see all numbers. If you look under the hood, show us that we're about to see a really rough time and whether it hits this fourth quarter and this black friday cyber monday and this holiday season or whether it bleeds into next year we don't know i don't know but here's what my plea for a lot of companies out there i'm talking to our clients now on both sides of the business about this uh I, I'm, I'm talking more kind of in the dms with people about this um but we learned some lessons at the end of last year in certain industries where we can't rely on the things that got us through the 2021, 2022, even 2023 and beginning of 2024. You, you run a D2C company. You can't rely on meta to, to grow your business, let alone make it profitable. CPMs are likely to go real high, uh, uh, in the, in the coming months and, and into next year, acquisition costs are, are going to go high, higher. It's going to be more challenging. Consumers' wallets are just not as full. It's a real thing. I uh, was just talking with a guy that owns a, I don't know, anywhere from five to ten million dollar lawn care company, and he said, "Shit is rough." Um, he's like, "We're in survival mode. Uh, people are cutting costs. They're cutting expenses." And he's like, "I fear that this is just the beginning. What am I going to do? You know, I have a people uh, machinery." uh, you know, high kind of up X, uh, business. Um, and I don't know what to do. And I just said, listen, I get it. You know, I'm, I'm in an industry where it's all related. It's all, it's all driven by people. And, um, not only my own people servicing our clients, but also the people who are buying our clients products and services. And those people just are, uh, those people are, are feeling the constraints of, um, lower pay, higher inflation, um, or, 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 you know, not as much fake money floating around from the government that, that was, and we're seeing all of that really come to fruition. And, um, and the best thing you can do as a business owner is to lean out right now, lean out. Um, don't expect that you're going to power through and you're just going to grow and your customers are going to keep buying because they're not. And, the only way you can really survive is to lean out now. Unfortunately, most business owners have to look at your staff, reduce where possible, look at your software, get rid of the licenses that you don't need. Look at the efforts that you're doing to do things like, I hate to say it, but like building your personal brand on the company's dollar. You have to be careful with things like that, right? Founder led marketing, all that stuff. It works. It's great. It brings in new business. It does. It does it for me as well. But you have to be careful spending, uh, you know, two, three, four, five thousand dollars a uh, a month on building your personal brand when on your company's dollar when that's money that you could be putting into savings and working existing customers to work out longer term contracts with them now for a reduced pay. Uh, you know, all the things that can get you through the next twelve to eighteen months um, at least of what's likely going to be a really rough time for businesses in most sectors. So leaning out is one way. The next way is start to invest in, in opportunities that can provide more cost efficient growth. Listen, I'm biased, of course. Uh, but when you look at how to use, uh, the same or less ad budget, let's call it a hundred thousand dollars a month, just for round numbers. How can you use that hundred thousand dollars a month to get um, more out of it. 
pay attention to your website and your conversion rates. Uh, lo look at that. You don't need to hire an agency like us, but go and uh, have somebody in your team start to look at the data to see how you can improve your conversion rates so that from the $100,000 a month you're spending on ads, instead of getting a 1% conversion rate, you're getting a 2% conversion rate, at least now while people are still spending a little bit of money. Then invest in your retention to increase your lifetime value, email marketing, SMS, calling your customers, talking with them, seeing how they're doing, getting data that way and trying to extend and stretch out that dollar you're spending on Meta or Google or, or wherever you're acquiring your customers and getting more out of it, thus making you more profitable. Then take that cash over the next three to six months, depending on how things go and save it. Save the nest egg for when you will, without a doubt, need it. So by leaning out your existing team and your existing uh, OPEX, operating expenses, software, unnecessary things you're paying for now, by leaning that out, you've carved out more profit that you can stash away. Uh, and by investing in more, more profitable use of your ad spend, using conversion rate optimization, using retention, uh, and, and increasing that lifetime value. And then again, stashing that additional money and cash away. Uh, use your P&L and your budgeting to figure out how much that's gonna be. Stash that away to prepare for the storm that is coming. And then finally, what I would, ex what I would suggest that uh, e-com consumer companies do, and even B2B and, 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 and other more blue collar businesses, is pay attention to what does well in a uh, stressed economy, um, or a recessed economy, rather, uh, you know, we're, we're entering the, and I can't take credit for this. I, f I just saw this on Twitter. We're, <laughs> we're entering the dollar store and Gucci era. That means that the dollar store and the cheap, cheap, cheap businesses are going to thrive. And the luxury goods brands like Gucci, they're going to thrive, but everything in the middle is going to really struggle. So if you're offering a service to a, a, a company, try to go for the luxury companies. If you're offering a service to a customer or a consumer or a product, try to go for luxury. It's not always easy. It's not always possible, but try to go towards that wealthier person because they're less likely to be impacted by a recession. Okay. On the flip side, if you're more towards the lower end of the, uh, if it's more towards the lower end of the, the price scale, your products, your services, then rather than discounting, I mean, you can discount, right? You can. If you're already headed that way, you could probably discount without hurting your brand much. So you may want to start to offer discounts for longer term contracts if that's next year's lawn care or uh, pay up front. We have a business unit where we do websites uh, for manufacturing companies, websites and SEO. That's all we do. Build websites, do SEO. And we give a 20% discount if they pay up front for the entire year. So you may want to start thinking about offerings that you can do to your customers to get them to pay up front for a deep, deep discount to give you some cash that then you can store for next year. Uh, but this is my plea for all of you to start paying attention. And the worst case scenario for you if you do all of this is that we don't actually hit a deep recession or depression and doesn't get that bad. And here you've got this nest egg and you've got a super lean, profitable business, uh, which now you can build a foundation on best case scenario, which is actually a worst case scenario anyways, is that shit does the hit the fan. We do enter a deeper recession. Um, and you've got something to help you survive through the next 12 to 18 months. Um, because you acted early.